Hey, Joe, um, like, what are you to your audiences right now? What do you explain as far as how, you, how to communicate and connect and collaborate in the virt virtual world? You know, I, I'm, um, it, I kind of go back to um, that book I was telling about um, the principles, the fundamental principles are the same. As I mentioned, networking is a place we go to give and serve. I totally agree. I totally agree. The principles are the same. But, but the, the tools in, in which we've got to accomplish those are completely changed. And without being uh, redundant from what Jeff said, he's right. You got to get comfortable on Zoom. Quite and honestly, I don't like it that much. Yeah. I understand that. But the older you are, the less comfortable you are. Like Gabrielle Gittimer, 11 years old, she's more comfortable on Zoom than anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then go to the next, go to 21 year olds, they're comfortable also, go to 30 year olds, they're 50, 50, and then 40 year olds, they're uncomfortable. Because yeah. we I'll go back to this, this thing, uh, Brian, that I talked about, and I don't have a solution for it, except with maybe a readjustment um, of our mindset. But Jeff and I are both energy people. And I think it's hard, and I've done a lot of talks the last two months, virtual, and I always prided myself, and I've seen Jeffrey too. We, we go early and stay late. We love connecting with people. We love yeah. exchanging the energy. It's just harder to do. And that's the new world that we live in, I think. So, Joe, Joe, back, hang, on second, this. Brian, hang on a second. Joe and I are approachable. Yeah. And we enjoy engaging conversation with others because we learn from them. We don't just go to teach, we go to learn. Yeah. And we, we have a good time at it. I can, I can honestly tell you that in 25 years of giving talks, I've never had a bad time, ever. I may, I may have had a bad plane ride, but I've never had a bad talk. So is it listening to both of you, people are gonna have to train themselves or listen to podcasts or people like you on how do you connect even more because they're not used to helping serving it's more of selling so times have changed because you better be able to do it better than ever right now serve and help yep. rather than sell yeah yeah you got to double you, down on that yes and you have to be get uncomfortable until you're comfortable with it yeah you know but brian uh jeff here and i have had this talk in the past there's a guy out in phoenix uh by the name of joe polish he's a, a trainer but he's got one of the best stories I've heard. He was a hardcore heroin addict. I mean, he did cocaine. He talks about it. And he's come back. You don't see a lot of uh, heroin addicts come back. And he's the real deal. And I've gotten to know him. He's a good guy. And what he says is um, the opposite of addiction. He's an addiction expert now. The opposite of addiction is connection. Hmm. And if you look at people that have gone through the coronavirus, you know, everyone jokes about it, but the, when you're not connected to people and you don't have that en energy exchange, you, you've seen the rise of uh, alcohol, drugs. I'm, I'm assuming the pornography industry has gone off the charts. And all of these are methods for people trying to find some form of connection, and they're trying to replace the connection that they had before. Um, and I just, I think this, if we don't get this, the, the amount of depression, alcoholism, domestic abuse, all of this is uh, going to go on the rise. I talked to a buddy the other day. He said that he and his wife decided they didn't want to have kids. They were going to tell their kids at dinner that night. <laughs> they didn't want to have kids anymore. <laughs> Listen, here's the deal. You have to pick your addictions. Everybody has them. The only question is, what is it? Yeah. You know, people go, well, you're a work addict. I go, right, what's your point? Like, I would rather have that than be a Netflix binge watcher. Also an addiction.